When you think of tractor, John Deere comes to mind. The company that has now cemented its place in the agricultural world, and it is an award-winning brand that dates back to as early as 1837, when the man himself was still around. John Deere was a blacksmith in Grand Detour, Illinois, who wanted to make farmers' jobs a bit easier. It all started when John invented one of the first steel plows that could till American's Midwest prairie soil without clogging. The following year, Deere established a business to manufacture and market the plow, and his own company was incorporated as Deere & Company in 1868. The present firm was incorporated in 1958 as John Deere, Delaware Company. It assumed the current company name later that year after merging with the old Deere & Company and its subsidiaries. Since its inception, Deere & Company has witnessed five generations of Deere family leadership. In addition to making different pieces of equipment, the company has seen many different factories, leaders, and logos over time. But the commitment to innovation, agriculture, growth, and people is what made it so fascinating to reflect upon the history of the company. When demand increased for the plows, after almost 11 years, he started the company. He moved from Grand Detour to Moline, Illinois in 1948 for transportation and power advantages. Just two years later, he had created 1,600 plows, and the range of equipment started to increase. He came up with the first ride on a plow, which relied on horses. Breaking through like this was the forefront of success. His second son, Charles Deere, took over the company in 1886 after his father passed away. He led the company as the head and used his experience as the best salesman to establish the first branch of John Deere in Kansas City. It was called a branch house, and these branch houses provided information about the fields that influenced new development. He eventually passed away in 1907, and during his time, he helped the company to become the top problem solver in the country. After his death, William Butterworth, who joined the company 15 years earlier as an assistant buyer, who was also the son-in-law of Charles Deere, became president of the company. His leadership fueled the company's expansion. He built 11 factories, and 25 sales organizations were consolidated into one entry. It was his vision of expansion that made the modern Deere and company. The product line expanded at the same pace. He entered the combined harvester market in 1912 and the tractor business in 1918 with the purchase of Waterloo Engine Gas Company. He retired in 1928, and the company's leadership torch was handed down in the great-grandson of John Deere. Charles Deere Winman, who started as an employee and made his way up to the president chair. When he became in charge, the hardships of the Great Depression started, but he made sure that, with his hard work, the company stayed on the path to success. His hard work paid off when the company introduced the Model A tractor in 1934, which was superseded by Model B the following year. Winman passed away in 1955, and the company got into the hands of William Howitt who started as a territory manager but was named director after just two years and elected as president. From this time onwards, the company started to establish itself as a multinational entity, purchasing a share of the tractor company in Mannheim, Germany, and acquiring land in Monterey, Mexico in 1956. As John Deere expanded its global reach, the company also welcomed new four- and six-cylinder tractors under Hewitt's leadership. These models, called the New Generation of Power, were originally introduced in 1960. From 1982 to 1990, Robert Hansen took charge for eight years. And despite not being related to the man, he left a page in the company's history. Hansen was named the president of Deere & Company in 1978 before being elected chairman and CEO following William Hewitt's retirement in 1982. In the midst of difficult recessions in the 1980s, Hansen helped the company not only stay afloat, but also exceed sales expectations. This positive trend continued and saw John Deere enter the healthcare market in 1985 with the formation of John Deere Healthcare Incorporated. After Hansen retired in 1990, Hans Bescherer got elected as chairman of John Deere Company. He stressed values that have played a key role in the modern-day success of the company since the steel plow. A dedication to constant innovation and global growth enabled immense changes, 
such as the formation of separate operating division for Deere's lawn and ground care equipment operations. During Bechera's tenure, the company continued to lead when it came to new AG technology and precision farming. Additionally, Deere and Company entered a long-term relationship with the PGA and opened the John Deere Pavilion in 1997 under his leadership. Having managed a range of operations within the Worldwide Construction Equipment Division, Robert W. Lane had an understanding of what it would take to help Deere and Company attain maximum global growth by establishing the SVA, shareholder value added, model. The company was able to achieve world-class status in asset efficiency and ROI. This included modernizing traditional factories around the world and ensuring dealer organizations were upgraded in order to better meet customer demands. Upon his retirement as chairman of Deere & Company's board of directors in 2009, Lane was succeeded by Deere's current chairman and CEO, Samuel R. Allen. Since 2019, the company is led by John C. May, is chairman of the board of directors and CEO of the company. Today, he leads more than 75,000 employees. Today, John Deere is no longer the company that makes tractors. With the use of modern-day technology, assessment techniques, and artificial intelligence, they do not hide away from extending their research to new ventures. The company, rather, provides a complete solution for agriculture, with the focus on the sustainability of the agriculture industry while keeping in view the climate disaster we are headed towards. The drone technology makes it easier and lower cost for farmers to inspect hundreds of acres in minutes improving the quality of the crops and increasing economic value. Over the past century, John Deere has continued to evolve and find success along the way. Through different forms of leadership, logo designs, factory locations, and equipment production, this company has been able to stand out and prove itself time and time again. By looking back at John Deere history, we can prepare ourselves for all that it has to hold in the future.